Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial in which uh, I will show you how to improvise two-part invention on a piano. So the technique is called counterpoint and is an ancient way of writing music. It has been traveling through the centuries and composers learn how to do it today as well. It is an ancient way of composing that uh, has uh, crossed the centuries from the Renaissance to even nowadays. Composers today learn counterpoint in uh, conservatories and in music schools. And uh, it comes from uh, the term contra, counter, contra, which uh, in English translates as uh, against. And it's a way to put uh, notes, dots, points, one near the other, horizontally creating melodies and vertically creating harmonies. And um, it is something that has always been related to writing music. And the reason is beyond a certain level of complexity, you need to write things down. But it has always started practically. For keyboard and, and piano players, this is quite intuitive because to play two parts at a time is something that pianists do all the time, playing with two hands at the same time. So. Our approach today is extremely practical and we will refer to notes not by their names, not by their harmony, not by their chords, but just by their interval. And by interval I mean the distance in keys between one note and the next. For example, between this C and that C we have an octave eighth, because of course there are eight notes in between C and C. Now the first interval that we're gonna introduce today is the third. We don't care about minor and ma major third, we just think about thirds. The interval will be maintained the same and as you see, I don't even care much at this stage about which fingers I'm using. I just wonder whether we can sound nice by just maintaining the interval of third. The first, the first interval is this one. What I'm gonna do now is separate a little bit the hands by maintaining the relationship. The tenth is more approachable for pianists and um, will maintain the harmonic relationship of third. Third and tenth, you see here we have 10 uh, notes in between C and E, will still, be, uh, will still sound consonant. Now, it's already polyphonic music. I'll encourage you to do is to go in different di directions. And use the fingers as you like. You can, you can think in these terms. You can have one hand leading and the other following. For example, I want to go from E to A and the left hand follows through. Other times I want to go from E to, to down and, and the left hand follows through. Let's, let's try to see if this works on a famous melody like uh, the Ode to Joy. Now, we have seen so far movements that are always stepwise. Can we skip? Seems like. And I encourage you to try skipping in every direction until, until something nice comes out and something that you, that you like comes out. But don't forget to always maintain the distance between uh, the two notes uh, consistent. Let's do the similar thing but with the left now and let's see if uh, skipping, skipping in a more familiar way, you probably recognize this, this is a Parker Bell Canon. What will happen if I have the right hand follows, follow through? As you notice, this sounds really well. So in this case was the left hand leading and the right hand catching up. Now let's turn the interval of third into its own inversion. Of course, we will find a different interval. Now this is a sixth. Can we move in the same way and find the same type of 
consonances, of course we can. And we can also skip. And please do find all sort of solution. It's really interesting and it's really interesting to invent and see where this leads. Of course, if we expand to the same interval larger than an octave, then it would become something like a 13, which is a bit harder to, to count. But nevertheless, you can hear how how the consistency of sound is maintained. Now, the next step will be to combine third and sixth. For example, third, sixth, third, sixth. In this case, I have let the left hand go in, in a scale way downwards. Let's do the same thing with the right hand, where the right hand goes up and the left hand creates different intervals. Third, six, third, six. You see how this sounds very classical? Huh? Now, how about sequences of thirds and sequences of sixes? For example, two thirds and two sixes. Again, thirds. and sixes. You can really be creative and go nuts just following this principle. You see how classical already this sound. This is a two parts invention. Now, in the next step, we'll start to add ornaments, which is probably the, where the real fun starts. By adding ornaments, I mean uh, adding extra notes between uh, my first choice, E, for example, and F. So what would be an extra note? See, I'm adding an extra note, a link. And the way I think about it is I'm on first note and I want to reach my next. Let's say that the next is G. Let's say that my next is D. Let's say that my next is C. etc. Now, ideally, we will do this with the left hand as well. So, let's try. That's, uh, it takes maybe some time to get used to the way of thinking, but after a bit of practice, it becomes more natural and uh, it's really, really fun. Now, how about switching between uh, the left and the right? What do I mean? One note in the right, one note in the left. from one hand to the other, adding ornaments. Okay, now we're gonna add two notes. And we're going to switch between the right and the left. And for the last step, today we're gonna add four note ornaments. The most common ornament is called the turn. So let's say from E 
I'm gonna go up and down and come back to it. Okay, so how will this work with two hands? That's the sound on a single note, but I want to reach another note. So for example, I wanna go to F, now to G, now the left. This is start becoming complex, but at the same time, if you maintain the attention to the note you want to land on, you can build the ornament before. Okay, another example of four notes ornament is the scale. The scale can be the scale like this. Of course, let's do the other hand. Notice the scale doesn't have to land on the note in the same direction. Okay, and uh, we can add the inversions for each of these ornaments. The inversion of the turn is starting from below. Now notice we have two of the same ornament. The upward and the downward. And now we're gonna do the inversion of the scale as well. So you see already how much complexity is reached just by multiplying simple principle and practicing simple principle uh, over and over around. Okay, now you're free to invent your two parts invention. If you enjoyed this video on uh, improvising in two parts invention, please feel free to record your creative improvisations and feel free to send it to us. We would love to hear it and uh, send you feedback if you shall ask for it. The London Contemporary School of Piano, we do a lot of uh, creative work on music, on techniques, on style, classical and modern, and just visit our website contemporaryschoolofpiano.com.